The single best thing we can do is have a national dialogue about this, because as the president said, if we can do something that even if it only impacts on saving one life of a child or an individual out there, it's worth doing. But I think we can do a lot more than that. All right. Let me introduce our guests at this virtual roundtable near your fireside chat. Guy Kawasaki. He's an author and a technology expert living in Palo Alto, California. Good morning. Hey, Guy. Good morning. Phil DeFranco, who's a media entrepreneur and popular host of the Phil DeFranco Show on YouTube, which I'm sure you watch, Mr. Biden. Well, I actually I have seen it. I wish I had your hair. <laughs> All right. I have it. Uh, absolutely. Phil DeFranco, I know uh, a lot of your folks were talking about video games on your board as well. Um, yeah, there was, there was a, a big conversation of video games, $10 million spent into the, the research of, of movies, video games, violence. And I, I think there is something there. Before that, I did want to hit, you were talking about the, the facts. So I did go to FBI.gov, um, which I, I have up. I think it is uh, unbiased research that has shown that since... The, the assault weapon ban expired while firearm sales have increased. The number of murders have gone down. And you previously mentioned the 1,200 firearm-related deaths, but not assault rifles. Um, so what would you say to the people that say, yes, you are infringing on our rights, not for sporting or for hunting, but in California, everyone talks about the big earthquake or some terrible natural disaster as a last line of defense. What would you say to those well, people? Well, I, I would say weapons? there's an awful, uh, you know, guess what? A shotgun will keep you a lot safer. A double barrel shotgun than uh, the assault weapons in somebody's hands that doesn't know how to use it, even one who does know how to use it. You know, it's harder to use an assault weapon than hit something that is a shotgun, okay? So you want to keep people away in the earthquake, buy some shotgun shells. Um, okay. not, uh, number one. But anyway, and, and, uh, with regard to violent crime going down, I'm very proud it went down. I'm proud in large part the reason it went down is we put 100,000 cops on the street. But that didn't mean the cops were safer as a consequence of these guns. The cops were less safe the more assault weapons were on the street. They don't account for even not only a bulk, they account for a small percentage of the gun crimes in America. More people, more people out there get sh that has a that that has cartridges that that you can have magazines that can put two, ten, eight, twelve, fifteen, thirty shells in it than from any assault weapon. You see, I'm much less concerned, quite frankly, about uh, um, what you call an assault weapon than I am about magazines and the number of rounds that can be held in a magazine. But the point is that. The fact that violent crime is down and there's been a proliferation of assault weapons, quote unquote, as was defined up to now, on the street, uh, does not suggest that taking assault weapons off the street would not, in fact, make it safer, particularly for the folks who are mostly outgunned cops. And you previously mentioned the, the magazine sizes. Yes. So, I guess my question with that is the, the gunman in Connecticut fired 150 rounds, meaning that he had to swap out his 30-round magazines at least four times. Yep. Um, with how fast it, you, you can swap out a magazine, do you think limiting the, the, the magazine size to 10 uh, will have well, an impact? Well, let's assume, uh, by the way, your facts are correct. About 30, yes. uh, he had some magazines, I think only had 20 shells, but I'm not sure, 30 okay. shells. So he had to swap out four or five times. If it, was, if, it was, if it was 10 shells in there, he would have had to swap out 30 times, or he would have stopped out, had to stop out um, uh, 25 times. And so Which what is, would happen is the response time, in fact, may have saved one kid's life. Maybe, maybe it would took longer, maybe one more kid would be alive. But let me give you an example. Uh, in, the, in the case of Gabby Gifford, when the guy had to swap out a new magazine, he fumbled. He fumbled. And he was able, and an older woman reached up and grabbed his hand, and they subdued him. All of them would have been dead had he not had to change that magazine, had there been 30 clips in that magazine, or 40 clips in that magazine. The same way with Aurora. A guy had 100 shells in the magazine. Fortunately, it jammed. It jammed enough that it gave time for folks to get there and, in fact, save lives. So look, I'm not making the argument that this will end crime or this is, I make the argument this way. There is no sporting need that I'm aware of to have a magazine that holds 50 rounds. None that I'm aware of. And I'm a sportsman. 
number one. Number two, there is no dim diminution of your ability to physically protect yourself having 10 clips in a round, I mean having 10 rounds in a clip instead of 30 or 40 rounds. And what it does do, now for a professional, it only takes you, you go to the FBI, you'll, you're still, they'll show it takes a second and three quarters for a pro to change the clip. But not, these, not, not all these people are pros. And so if you just give another, if it took another, uh, you know, a minute and a half, two minutes, who, who knows who, who, who else might have been alive? And those kids may be alive, some of them. Mr. Vice President, uh, we're out of time. Thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. On behalf of all of us. I appreciate very much.